Welcome to the Bridge Church. Glad you're with us tonight and uh, online. Welcome as well. Uh, we're excited to be gathered together once again uh, on the heels of the county going back to school. And I think we'll spend a, a moment of time in prayer as we know the entire county coming up this week is about to unleash itself into online education. So there's a lot of prayers needed, teachers and parents alike. Um, but uh, thank you again for being with us tonight. A few things first. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you so much for continuous uh, just support of the, of the church itself. Uh, as always, there are, are multiple ways to give, whether you give online, um, whether you text to give, give in person. We're appreciative of that. Um, and also next week we have a Discover class, uh, which is available via online or in person. So again, interested in more and knowing, knowing more about the Bridge Church, uh, absolutely please either tune in online or in person. We'll be glad to uh, see you there. But I'm going to pray for us before we start worship this uh, evening and uh, almost said morning, even I'm thrown off already with school starting. But uh, I'm going to pray for us. I'm also, again, I'm going to specifically pray for all the kiddos, uh, and teachers and parents alike as we get ready to get back into it. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this time that we're gathered together, Lord. Um, thank you for each and every just heart that's tuned into this moment, God. I'm um, just thankful that we get to praise your name in freedom, Heavenly Father. And uh, we pray this week as uh, our county our areas get ready to go back to school uh, just praying for the teachers uh, praying for just wisdom and guidance through this new era of online education praying for parents and as they take it on the other part of the responsibility of being home and seeing it through from the teacher's side and uh, praying for the kiddos um, as, they, as they're probably being put through the most right now as they have just been completely uprooted from their norm god just praying just a special blessing over them and time of peace and comfort inside of them, God, and as we get ready to turn to worship to you, Heavenly Father, may we just let go of everything that held us before we came in here, God, and may we give this time to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please stand with me. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, sing. Come all you weird. Come all you thirsty. Come to the world. That never ends dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come, all you sinners, come find His mercy. Come to the table, He will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for. Come on, we sing for God so love. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Me will live forever. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, let's sing. Bring on. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. He has opened us for God so loved the world that He gave us. His one and only Son to save us, whoever believes. Forever, we see the power, the power of him, forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so love, God so love the world. Come on, we'll sing praise God. One and only Son to say 
for God to love the world that He gave us in one and all. Son to save us forever and at least in me. We'll live forever. We'll sing the power. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God's so love. God's so love the world. Come on, we sing, bring all your fears. We sing, bring all your fears. Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loves the world. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall. But you and them failed me yet. We see you wait, waiting for change to come. Knowing the battles won, for you have never found me yet. We sing your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Oh, you never failed this yet, God. Sing, I am. I know the night won't last. Your will will come to pass. Heart will sing your praise again. We sing Jesus, Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. We sing your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Promise. Your promise still stands. 
great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Jesus, we lean on that tonight. God, we lean into your promises. We believe that you've done it before and that tonight, Lord Jesus, you're going to move in our lives, God. So we lean on that promise tonight. We love you, Jesus. We pray all these things in your awesome and mighty name. Amen. Y'all can take a seat. How's everybody doing? Yeah? Everybody good? Awesome. Everybody online, come in on there. Let me see something. Are you good? Everybody feeling good? This is a holiday weekend, Labor Day weekend. So if you're online watching us, maybe you're like on the lake. We don't have lake. On the river, uh, somewhere around here on the boat, just enjoying our time this weekend. So I hope you are uh, as well. And I just want to take the next few moments, and we're in week chat week chapter week two of navigating the road ahead last week we talked about uh just taking that faith journey and following christ taking that first step of uh we use three different words of head heart and hands and making that conscious decision to follow christ and pursue him and everything that we have and then the heart and how god changes us and then we're going to continue to talk about that heart section just a little bit over these uh next couple of weeks because um, I believe we're in a season where it's like, okay, we're, we're almost getting a groove back. It's a little different groove, uh, but we're getting back into a little bit of a routine and knowing where we're going. And so how can we continue to take these steps to navigate the road ahead? And so um, I've entitled this message today. I've entitled it. You guys ready? Ready? Very good. Uh, I've entitled it The Answer. The Answer answer okay um that's my little country twang in there answer okay the answer that we're talking about and you're gonna see here in just a second but one of the things i love to do i don't know about you uh, anybody else in the room or online do you love history anybody love history like to study history layla's like nope not me uh yes jonathan my man i like it okay um but just studying history, I love to find out about the past. I love to hear stories. Uh, if we could sit around the campfire and tell stories all day, I think I should have grown up in like the medieval nights times, you know, where you like just sharing those war stories and all of that. Uh, but when I read through history, one of the things that always jumps out to me is when I see a great leader. Somebody that like transformed the time and the era that they were in. Uh, it just piques my interest. And I'm like, oh, I want to read the biography on them. I want to see how they interacted with people. How did, they, uh, how did they lead? How did they know what decisions make? All those different things. But And I love it, too, because when you read the Old Testament, there's so many stories in the Bible, like Nehemiah. If you know Nehemiah, he saw that uh, his homeland, uh, the walls were completely tore down, and his people were completely exposed. And so he saw that and wanted to, to step in and solve the problem that was there. And as I study history and as we study history and as a society, we see there is something about solving a problem, being an answer to a problem that just piques the human brain. It piques our interest to go, wait a second, you just solved that problem. That, that stands out to me. And then in moments and, and times in history, History, when lead, great leaders step up, they usually step into a problem. Where if people saw a problem, that great leader stepped in and said, hey, I believe what we can help navigate to the answer or to a solution or to what that may look like. I even think about in the Old Testament, David and how uh, the Israelites, they needed a new king. They needed somebody who would follow God and be a man after God's own heart. And that problem arised and David rose to the occasion to be the answer. And then, of course, the greatest example ever Jesus, he saw that we had this uh, disconnect between us and God. And part of his sovereign plan was to send his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. And he became the ultimate answer. 
And as I think about that, and I think about the times that we're living in, and, and, and quite frankly, it could be really any time, but there are problems that arise all around us, issues that arise all around us. And if we think about the Bible and think about our own lives and we see those things around us, how can we lean in to be in the answer to what people need? And I love this because uh, when we watch Jesus, last week we talked about following him. And this week we're kind of continuing on that journey into Matthew chapter 9. So if you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to open up Matthew chapter 9. We're going to be in verses 35 through 38. And uh, to set this up, Jesus has just uh, got done doing a string of miracles. I mean, he has prayed for people to be healed. He has uh, leaned in and spoke life into people. He has raised it. He has cast Cast out demons, all these different things he has happened. And you'll see as I read here in verse 35. And then Jesus stops and he pulls his disciples together and he brings them in close and he says, Hey, I want to show you something right. I want to teach you something right now. And this is the picture that we get to lean into and listen in Matthew chapter 9. And so it starts here, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. You guys still with me? Yeah. yeah. All right, verse 35. It says, and Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus looked out over them and saw the people walking, and he saw them, and he says, like their sheep spread out. They didn't have somebody to show them the way. Somebody didn't show them the, how to navigate the road ahead. And then Jesus continues, verse 37. This is when he talks to his disciples. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into the harvest. Jesus stops and he says, you see the people there, they're walking around without somebody to follow. And he had compassion. And Jesus saying, I want to be that one, the shepherd that people follow so that they know how to navigate the road ahead. But then he continues on and he says, you know what you can do? Let's pray and ask God to send out laborers because the harvest, as he's talking about the people in our world, the harvest is plentiful. The people who are really ready to seek God, he's saying the harvest is plentiful. He's saying, but what we need is an answer to a particular prayer. He says, pray to God and ask that he would send out laborers so that they would go and work the harvest. And if you're taking notes here, I'd encourage you to take notes. Maybe you want to write it down, write it in your phone. Whenever I'm listening to somebody preach, sometimes I, I write that down so I can revisit that and look at it over the next couple of weeks. But it says here, pray that God would send out people. You and I, we can add this to our prayer life. And it almost seems too simple, right? But God instructs his disciples right then, and he also can instruct us in saying, hey, let's not forget that to pray for God to send out the laborers to help take care of the harvest that is in front of us. And so you and I get to lean into that. And this is what so I believe is so powerful for you and I to think about when we lean into this is because we have an opportunity, you in the room, me right here, the people that we are connected to, maybe you're listening online, we have the opportunity to be the answer. We have an opportunity to be an answer to this prayer right here. Brad Childress, Daniel Kasnay, John, we have an opportunity. We can be the answer to this prayer. And how amazing is it to know that 2,000 years ago, Jesus pulled his disciples together and he began to pray with them and saying, hey, let's pray this specific prayer. And 2,000 years later, we can walk and step into this prayer and be an answer to what Jesus and his disciples prayed for we can be an opportunity we can do that i believe honestly even as a, a church plant there was a group of people who were praying for more churches in the low country and we you in this room we get to be a part of being the answer to stepping into that and saying we want to be a part of solving the problem of solving what's going on in our world because we can step in and be the answer 
And Jesus, being the ultimate example, he walked this road. He walked this path, and he showed us how to be the answer in people's lives. Because when he walked into a city, he saw issue after issue after issue. People would come up to him. In fact, once the word started spreading around, it, Jesus couldn't go anywhere without like a, a mob of people. Like if we were to see a celebrity come into town, and all of a sudden the paparazzi are all around him, right? Like when I go to the mall... I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> see, I caught you. I was making sure you're listening. Uh, but it's like whenever you go somewhere, Jesus will just be covered with people trying to reach him and touch him. And can you heal me? I got a problem. I got a problem, Jesus. Can you help me? Can you help me? And Jesus led the way. He saw the problem. And he said, you know what? Let, he started leaning and said, I want to be the answer for you in your life. Let me heal you for this. Let me, let me speak into your life. Disciples, let me give you a new purpose, a new hope, and a new life. And then he reached into other people, and he, I'm going to read out a couple just different things. He cast out demons. He taught people his ways. And think about this even, too. He, he was teaching, and thousands, it said 5,000 men. And so it was probably double that with women and children. They just counted the men. But 5,000 men, they were sitting listening to teaching. And then all of a sudden, they were like, we need to send these people home because they're going to need to eat. Like, it's Labor Day weekend, and they're going to have to eat something, throw something on the grill, right? And so Jesus says, no, you feed them. Be the answer to what they need. And he takes just a simple lunch, and he says, hey, I'm going to pray. And he feeds the 5,000. He even meets the physical needs that the people were around him. And when Jesus saw that, he led the way as the example. And what I love about this is that Jesus realized something. I say Jesus realized something, but Jesus really knew this all along. He came to show us and to be the example. But Jesus came, and if you read uh, uh, this a beautiful piece of scripture, it says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. There is something powerful when you and I walk into a place, walk into a situation, and we look at it and go, okay, how can I be a solution to a problem? How can I help serve you in your life? How can I help stand in the gap of something that's going on in your life, in your situation, to help walk in what this could look like? And I want to read this because this is another teaching later on in Matthew chapter 23. And... Jesus, he makes a very, very bold statement here in Matthew chapter 23, verse 11. He says, the greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus leans in. He says, you want to be great? Like, do you really want to understand what greatness is? Wherever you go, do you want to be great? When you walk into your workplace, do you want to be great? When you walk into your marriage, do you want to be great? Do when you walk into the grocery store, do you want to be great? When you walk in as a father or a mother or whatever it is, if you want to be great, just as we talked about in history, the people that leaned in and, and solved these issues, Jesus said, if you want to be great, then you will be a servant and taking on that mindset of how can I serve you? How can I meet that need for those who are around us? And um, over the past few years, uh, I've had the opportunity of doing premarital, premarital counseling, and it's actually one of my most favorite things to do. I love that, and uh, people are getting ready to get married, and you get, just get to help kind of shape that and mold that, and it's just an incredible time, and they get to ask questions. You get to lean in and ask questions, and people come with vast different backgrounds, and one of the things I always love to encourage them during that time is to say, hey, if both of you face each other, and are willing to serve each other and put your needs above your own needs, then both of you will be taken care of, but yet both of you are serving each other over and over again, and it becomes a powerful way to live and interact with those people around you. But Jesus even takes this a step further, and he says, hey, what I want you to do is, because when you serve somebody, it allows us to stay humble, because he continues and says, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those those who humble themselves will be exalted. And if you're taking notes here, there's another quick thing that I believe helps when we serve. It helps shape our heart of what God wants for us. And it's humility paves the way to honor. 
Because when you and I take the humble approach of saying, I want to serve you, I want to walk with you, I want to help you, I want to encourage you, I want to meet the need, I want to be an answer for you today in your life. It allows us and opens up this doorway for us to stay humble. And it's not just about, oh, hey, look at what I've done and look at what I can do. Because then we can take on the mindset of the Pharisees and how they started lifting themselves up. And when Jesus came, he came to lower their status. He came to restructure everything, but yet we can walk in honor. And when we walk in honor, we walk in humility and God just gives us that wisdom and direction. And so I I began to think about this. And as we're thinking about serving and I I began to hear, uh, I, I love to listen to podcasts. Anybody else love to listen to podcasts? Like just any other things, or I know YouTube's a thing now, but I'm like, I'm like down, I got like 30 million podcasts on my little iPhone thing. I just like to listen through them all. And some of the things I started to hear and some people I follow, they were, they're strong Christians. And then some people I listen to that, um, that maybe they uh, are Christian, but they work more in, in the world and interacting with people. And I, and I started to hear this theme and it, and it, it took me on this almost like science driven uh, investigation because I knew this message was coming up. And I began to hear people talk about how when we serve or when the human person goes and takes somebody's needs above their own and they give or they serve, they help meet a need, that something chemically happens in our brain, that something changes it like phys- physically in us and in our mind it begins to change. And there are certain activities that we can do, like working out, a couple other different things, but um, it creates this, what they call in neuroscience, okay? Okay. I Googled it. I'm just kidding. No, I looked it up. But neuroscience it has what's called the happiness trifecta, the happiness trifecta, that when these three hormones get released in our mind and released in our body, it creates this happiness trifecta. And this is what it is. When dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, when those three are released in our brain, it creates this joy. It actually um, moves our brain. It changes us even physically. It talks about all these different health benefits, how it just moves through our body. It's better for our blood pressure. It's better for our joints. It changes our mood drastically right in the moment and continues on forward. It's when we allow those to be released in us. And one of the ways to release all three of those, guess what happens? When we serve. When we give, when we take on some and help someone, when we take that time to give, in fact, the Bible says it is better to give than to receive. And it's almost when you read and talk about neuroscience and what scientists have looked at, it's like, Jesus knows his creation, right? He knows how he wired us, how he created us to the very fact that he says, if you will follow my ways, it will be physically better for you too. How amazing is our God that he knows us to the point where he says, when you walk in my ways, when you follow me, not only will you become the answer to somebody in front of you, but you will also allow yourself to be changed physically from the inside out to walk in that promise and to walk in that truth. And that's an incredible thing for you and I to walk into. And so I wanted to, as I get ready to kind of land the plane, so to speak here, I wanted us to really think about how can you and I walk in this promise? How can you and I walk in this truth? And uh, there's a a guy in the Bible who is one of Jesus' disciples, and his name is Peter. And if you know anything about Peter, we've shared lots of multiple stories about Peter. Peter was a fisherman. He was one of those first ones that Jesus called as a disciple. And uh, he wrote a book, First Peter, in the Bible, inspired by the Holy Spirit. One thing I love about Peter is he was one of the ones who, like, he, he just couldn't contain himself. He would have to speak, and whatever came to his mind, he was, he's one of those types that something's on his heart. He's going to say it, right? Like, I don't know if you can relate to him, but this is Peter. I mean, he had that, and he leaned into that. And so when you read Peter's stuff, sometimes it's like to the point. It cuts through the dark. It cuts through the gray area, and he just speaks directly to you. And so Peter talks on this subject, and this is what he says here in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. You guys still with me? 
Amen. All right. And uh, if you're online, comment, heart emoji, whatever else is on there. There's all kind of emojis. Hit that on there. Stay with us as we're leaning into this. Because I, I believe that. Can I, I'm just going to stop. Y'all got me excited. It was my birthday yesterday, so I can stop and just be excited for a minute. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so, but I, I love this, this piece of scripture. And I love this talk. Because it's more of a, of a teaching talk, right? Like it's more of talking through it. But I believe that this, when I was praying over this message, I just felt I was like, God, this message could literally change people's lives. If we walk in this truth, if we walk in this way of Jesus, it will change our life, and it'll change the life of those people who are around us. I started preaching, it was almost, I almost looked it up, I was, I mean, started preaching almost 10 years ago, and I was preaching a youth ministry, and I got excited and went into youth detention centers, just anywhere, honestly, that would let me go and speak the word of God, and so I was going, and I started doing what 1 Peter chapter 4 tells us to do, and what Jesus asked us to do, and if I look back over that journey, it is one of the most powerful things that I I leaned into 10 years ago that radically changed my life. And that's stepping into serving. That's stepping into what God wants me to do while I'm serving those who are around us. And this is what he says here in verse 10. Now you guys ready? Yeah, okay. My wife said, okay, move on. Uh, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. That is such an incredible verse. If you're taking notes here, the first chapter 10, it says, We have been given gifts to serve others. Peter says, Whatever gift that you have received, use it to serve those who are around us. We, next week, Jason talked about we are starting our, our Discover class back. And in that Discover class, we help equip you with a spiritual gifts test. And once we become a believer in Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. That moment we receive salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit. Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gives us a gift in our lives and in our hearts. And I believe that God said, I want you to use those gifts to serve those who are around us. So not only do we get spiritual gifts, maybe it's a spiritual gift of hospitality or teaching or prophecy or, or giving or faith or whatever it may be. We can use those gifts and saying, how can I be an answer in somebody's life? How can I be an answer to those who are around me? Then I believe there are also gifts that you and I, we don't have to pray about that every believer can lean into. We can always offer prayer. We can always offer some acts of kindness for those who are around us. We can offer love. We can offer support. We can offer the, the material things that are around us to look and to say, oh, I can meet that need of that person who is around us. And one of the things that Peter says here in 1 Peter, it says, The gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. And he is saying a picture here. There we go. It was just a little rumble there just to make sure everybody was awake. Um, it's a faithful that you and I, when we received a gift, the way to be a faithful steward is to actually step in and to use the gifts that God has given us. And then I believe that maybe there are the gifts that may not necessarily be a spiritual gift, but maybe you can play an instrument or play piano or play um, a guitar or maybe you can sing or whatever that may be you can lean into. Or maybe it's, hey, I, I, I'm a, I have a gift that I can lead. I can help organize people and organize things, whatever that may look like. But you and I have the opportunity to step into that. And when you and I step in and use those gifts, we step into the stewardship that Peter speaks about here, that where we can rest in that and God begins to grow us spiritually from the inside out and we realize that we see God work in and through us, not only for our lives, but for the people's lives who are around us. And it becomes contagious and it be allows us to continue to speak inside of our lives and what God is doing. Now, so I want to read just one last verse and then give us three takeaways today. 
And then I'm going to close. But Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It's an incredible verse. It says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That you are God's workmanship, that he created you, he molded you, he shaped you in an incredible way, and he shaped you to do what? Good works, his works, to serve those who are around us. And this is what I think is, is amazing to think about. And it says that God prepared in advance. God saw you in your life and thought years ahead of time and thought about tomorrow and thought about Monday and Tuesday and said, I'm preparing these works for you. And when we step into those works, when we step into serving those who are around us, we experience God maybe like we've never experienced before. We experience something happen inside of our minds, inside of our heart, because that's how God wired us. And as we navigate this road ahead, and we're trying to figure out what steps to take. And how, how can I find a rhythm even in this moment? I would encourage, I'm going to give us three things that we can do, you can do today and think about the rest of the week. And the first one is, is I would ask that you would just pray and say yes to God. Maybe you've never stopped before and said, God, I want you to use me. You've given me gifts. You've given me an opportunity. You've connected me with certain people, God. I say yes to whatever you have for me. My yes is on the table, God. Whatever you ask me to do next, my answer is yes. Use me for your glory. Now, I don't know if you've ever prayed that, that prayer that is so freeing, and it's almost like, ooh, I don't know if I want to pray that. Like, how's God going to use me? But and when we understand and believe that and trust that, I believe something happens in us when we make that confession to God. Say, God, yes, use me. And the second thing is I, I would encourage you to take a step, to take a step. We, we've got our next steps tables that are right out there and online if you'd rather look at through those. And uh, we have what I talked about and Jason talked about our Discover class where you can begin to learn about spiritual gifts and learn about all the different areas of our church in which you can serve uh, or you can uh learn just more about our small groups and how can I grow in a community uh, other than just Sunday morning, then I would encourage you to begin to pray about and say, how can I take a step? Whatever step that may be. If I'm already connected, I've already been in Discover class, and maybe that next step is to be in a small group. Or I'm already in a small group, but I'm not serving yet. Maybe that step is to step into serving or whatever that may look like. I would encourage you to take that step. And like I said, 10 years ago, I took that step. I prayed that prayer. I said, God, whatever you would have me do, God, I just ask that you use me. And he started opening up doorways for me to start preaching. Not saying he's going to have you preach, but he just started opening up doorways. But I, I just remember thinking, like, I don't know how to do this. Like, what? what? I don't just write some stuff down. I just read your script. Like, what do you want me to do, God? But step by step, I just took that step. And he was there for me. And he gave me strength. And he gave me wisdom. And he connected me to the right people who showed me and gave me direction. But I can tell you, and then I'm going to give you the last one, but I can tell you, ever since I took that step, and I had somebody come up to me and go, God spoke to me today from what you said. And I can still remember just stepping back and going like, the creator of the universe spoke to you through me. There is nothing greater on this planet when somebody looks at you and goes, the way you served me today, God spoke to me. The, the, the way that you helped me today, the way that you prayed for me, I just, nobody's ever done that for me. The way that you sent me that scripture that God spoke through you by sending me that text. And when we experience that, oh, it gets so contagious, and that fire starts burning inside of our souls and saying, God, I want more of you. Use me more, God, and help me to walk into that. And then the last one is, is kind of simple and practical, but find someone to serve every day. 
Even if it's just, hey, this week, I'm going to make the conscious effort. I'm going to find somebody. Ooh, send me somebody, God. Put me somebody in my way. I'm about to buy that person's coffee in front of me or behind me. Just every day, find, even if it's a small thing, I'm going to shoot them a text. Uh, before my spouse leaves, I never usually say something. I'm going to say something, tell them I have a good day. I'm going to text them throughout the day. Maybe I have a friend that I need to reach out to or all of a sudden my neighbor, they get a whatever you want to uh, bless them with or help them or encourage them, whatever God plays places on your heart we look back and how that can even change us but our mind and how God created us for all of that to happen in us and through us and I'm excited I hope I hope we lean into this and then we come back next week and we're like sharing stories if you're not gonna believe it I did this and and God used me to this way and spoke to them or maybe you you'll show up and be like Daniel I sent 37 texts and nothing happened and I'm going to say, well, let's, let's lean in. Let's pray together. God's word never returns void. And we cur- encourage each other. And just like that, we get back into the ring. We get back into it. But we're walking this journey together. And as we navigate this road together, let's lean in. Let's take that step of faith. Let's grow together. And I believe with every ounce of my being that God will use us in this room, whoever's listening online to do incredible things for him. And so let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your truth, God. God, thank you for your son, Jesus, that died on the cross for us, God. That set me free, set us free in Christ. God, I pray for each and every person in this room and for those listening online, I pray that you would just speak to their heart right now, God. I pray that they would feel your presence. I pray that, uh, God, you would just start to reveal things in their heart, reveal things in their mind, that they would uh, know what step to take, God. I pray that you give them boldness and courage to take that step in you, that they may rest in the fact that that you are walking with them, God, and that we may trust you. God, I pray that uh, you would just continue to speak in a mighty way. I pray that you would put people in our path who you want us to serve, who you want us to lean into and, and connect with God. And I'm praying that you would make supernatural connections all throughout this week. God, I pray that you would begin to speak and to move in a mighty way. And we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's sing, let's worship together.
This is how I fight my with us tonight and online. Hey, we're so glad you're here with us today. Have a great week.
Change your